little history here. Black men and black women got the right to vote in the South on August 6, 1965. Right after slavery, the 15th Amendment was passed, which gave black men the right to vote. Black men and white men voted together in fusion coalitions. They voted economics, not concerned about the color of skin. In fact, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. mentions this. I just paraphrase it. In his March 25th, 1965, voting rights speech in Montgomery, Alabama. And by the way, those black and white men were able to pass the Civil Rights Act of 1875 that said treat everyone equally. What happened to that act? Supreme Court deemed it unconstitutional in 1883. And then on July 2nd, 1964, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was signed by President Johnson. And Reverend Dr. Martin King Jr. said in his Stanford University speech that the 64 Act was weaker than the 1875 Act. What happened to black men and white men voting together in fusion coalitions? They brought in segregation. They brought in the Southern strategy, divide and conquer. And now look at this. They want to stop what? Young people from voting. Republicans, right? Take a look. Here's the strategist talking about it. Memo to these white students. I told y'all they coming after you. Hashtag we tried to tell ya. Cleta Mitchell, a top Republican legal strategist, told a room full of GOP donors over the weekend that they must band together to limit voting on college campuses and same-day voting registration and automatic mailing of ballots to registered voters. The Washington Post got a copy of her presentation. Listen. I think that we can fix a few things in North Carolina because I think we, we have, uh, we now have a legislature controlled by the Republicans. Um, if we can persuade the new Republican member to vote with us. Um, but these are statutory changes that we could get done in North Carolina to protect against any of this private money. Because I promise you, Stacey Abrams has been in North Carolina, and we need to make sure that that money is not flowing into Mecklenburg, Durham, and Wake counties. So we need, to, we need to be looking at what are these college campus locations in Poland? What is this young people uh, effort that they do? They, they basically put the polling place next to the student dorm, so they just have to roll out of bed and go back to bed. Um, and we need to build strong election integrity task forces in those counties. Virginia, we have a great task force uh, in every, every county in Virginia, and we have a great statewide coalition. They, the governor just signed a bill yesterday that get, does away with signatures on absentee ballot applications and ballots, and now it has to be the last four digits of the social security number and a birth year. And we need to make sure that there's transparency and people are watching and verifying. That makes Virginia back in play, frankly, uh, to be able to have some authentication. And again, having first day in-person voting campaigns. Uh, Wisconsin is a big problem because of the first day, because of the polling locations on college campuses. There are five ones and threes. Their goal for the Supreme Court race was to turn out 240,000 college students in that Supreme Court race. And we don't have anything like that, and we need to figure out how to do that and how to combat that. So, yes. Yeah, if we cannot control the state house as the governorship, aren't we just out of luck? No, no, I don't think so. Because the thing, so in the states where we can make changes in the law, like North Carolina, I hope that we will be able to plug some vulnerabilities there. Um, but most of these are, it's just taking what, you know, we're kind of stuck with the whole hand. And uh, we'll see what happens in Virginia this fall. If we, if the Republicans are able to hold the state house and, and reclaim the state senate, then maybe it's possible to get rid of 45 days of early voting in Virginia. 45 days. Do you know how hard it is to have observers be able to watch for that long a period? I mean, there are several things that they can do. They can get rid of same-day registration, but they can't do that now because the Democrats still hold the state Senate. But I just remind everybody that having people involved, engaged, and overseeing all of that in 2021 in Virginia made all the difference, even though it was still controlled by Democrats in every office. Folks, again, I've been telling y'all what these folks have been doing. Joining us right now is Damon Hewitt, President and Executive Director of the Lawrence Committee for Civil Rights Under Law, my alpha brother, and also Cliff Albright, co-founder of Black Voters Matter, joining us from Atlanta. 
they, this, I could go back. This probably was 2012. I think it was 2012. I can't remember. It was Congressional Black Caucus Foundation ALC, and it was a panel. Um, uh, and it was um, then Secretary of State Kristen Clark was who uh, preceded you. Sheryl Eiffel and other representatives of Stuart Ponce was, was her panel. And I said to them, I said, y'all, we keep talking about black and brown voters. I said, we need to be talking about to these white college students. I said, because the numbers are trending and Republicans are about to go after them. And I said, we, I said, this thing about voter suppression, I said, it can't just be seen as a black brown thing. They coming after these white kids, right. and that's exactly what that woman just laid out. Well, look, what, what the clip said, and what they said is right. The Republicans are right. The youth vote is a threat to the party because of polarized voting, not just racially, but also politically polarized voting. We know the youth turnout for the 2022 midterm was the highest for a midterm, second highest for a midterm in the last 30 years. And that's not only black voters and brown voters, that's white young people as well, who are more enlightened, more progressive, and more willing to stand with black lives and with our causes. You know, Cliff, um, I'm a graduate of Texas A&M University, and overwhelmingly white, overwhelmingly conservative. They removed an early voting lo uh, location off of the Texas A&M campus, the Brazos County folks did. That benefits Republicans. Then they were like, oh, it's too early to put back on. And so I think it's going to be back on the campus by 24. But this is happening all over. Republicans put forth a bill in the Texas legislature to not, ha to not have early voting locations on any Texas campus, 8,000 students or higher. And so I'm like, yo, y'all don't understand. They're coming after you as well. So y'all better be in this fight with us black folks because we ain't alone. Yeah, you're exactly right, Roland. And, and, and add on top of that, that in your state of Texas, your home state of Texas, that in addition to you know, closing these polling places, it's also um, in Texas where you can use a gun permit to vote, but you can't use a student ID to vote. They don't like young folks. They don't like they don't like anybody. They don't like young folks. They don't like older folks. They don't like black folks. They don't like brown folks. They don't like women. They don't like LGBT. I'm actually in Tallahassee right now where I was at the Capitol uh, where, where they passed those horrendous bills yesterday. But my point being this, I think that this issue uh, really highlights two things that we've seen um, historically. You know, one is that all of these things that start out rooted in anti-blackness, right? That are that are that are tactics that are designed to direct black communities, young and old. It's only a matter of time before they start to expand them and they impact the entire population. They 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 try to do that with absentee voting, uh, targeting black folks. You remember the, the cases in Alabama where they try to prosecute uh, uh, black activists for absentee, and then years later it becomes something where they're trying to get rid of all absentee voting, right? College campuses, they attack black students first, then they come after all college students. So it really highlights that what starts in, in, in anti-blackness goes to the rest of the population in just a matter of time. But the other thing that this highlights is the point that you're making about the power of young people. At the end of the day, it was two young black men, the, the two Justin, the Tennessee two, that got expelled. But it was a lot of young folks that were marching on that Tennessee Capitol that was the impetus of, of, of that protest, right? And a lot of that was young white folks. Um, they don't like the energy that, that students across the board are having. That's because it's young folks that are that are concerned with the gun violence. It's young folks that are concerned with climate change because they know that it's going to impact them in their lifetime, right? Um, it's young folks that are that are concerned, most concerned with police violence that were in the streets during the, the racial reckoning of, of, of 2020. Young folks are, ha and it's young folks that have been impacting these elections. You heard her in the tape talk about, yeah, these young folks, uh, we think that they influenced this recent Wisconsin election with that very important Supreme Court race. It was young folks in places like Georgia and in other states in 2020 and more recently in 22 that it was young folks that were oftentimes one of the deciding factors in some of these uh, razor, razor thin margins. And so they are trying to squash that by any means necessary. And they continue to show us that all they care about is, is not the integrity, not, not election fraud. All they care about is winning elections. And that's all that this is about. She said in that video, oh, imagine um, in some of these places, these students are able to roll out of bed and go vote and then go right back and, and right back to their dorms. Like cluster pearls, heavens to Betsy. Oh my, you mean it's easy for them to, to, to leave their dorms, go vote, and then go back to the dorms? Like, like, oh, this must be the apocalypse. But this is this is what it's all. It's not about election integrity or voter fraud. It's only about a sheer use of power.
Damon, I made it clear in my book, White Fear, yeah. that this driving all of this here, the Republican Party is largely a white conservative party. And I keep warning black folks. I did a video last week and I, I, I got all the people, oh man, you ain't nothing but a, uh, you a shield and oh, people try to call up people operative. No, I understand policies and I understand where people stand. And the fact of the matter is this here, the Republican Party ain't trying to advance. You can't show me. If you put a list together of the top 20 issues for black Americans, I don't think you can find two where the Republicans are going to be supporting us. And so what they're doing, they are they are going to have an all out assault in 24 on black voters, on Latino voters, on voters who do not support them. And that's going to be closing up of, of, of places. They are absolutely going at the ballot drop boxes. They want to do look this Supreme Court. If they got section two, they could try to go back and deal with and gerrymander the districts of black caucus members. Right. People need to understand how the how the dots are connected with what they are doing. This is not about elections. This is about power. And what we've seen is all we need is two data points. One is all the voter suppression bills in the last few years, even the ones that didn't pass, but the ones that were proposed to make it harder for people to vote. But the other data point is the people who participated in, plotted, or apologized for the insurrection on January 6th. It is a one-sided party deal, right? Now, we, I represent a nonpartisan organization, but even we had to sue Trump and Stone and a number of other co alleged co-conspirators because of their role and their continued apology, apologizing rather for this insurrection. They're willing to tear down the entire democratic system, hurt their own voters in order to gain power. And that is just, that is just sick. Uh, David Cliff, hold tight one second. Bring my panel in. We come back from this break. Uh, folks, I have been warning y'all in the four and a half years we have done this show where we are now. And I am telling you, this is a code red for 2024. They absolutely want the White House back. They want the Senate back. They want to control all of it. And y'all had better understand this is war. And as Damon just said, because I wrote my book, White Fear, this is about power. You're watching Roland Martin Unfiltered on the Black Star Network.